Hey guys, how's it going? Rubbington here, and today I'm here with you guys for a tutorial on how to make this really awesome kind of leaking uh, layered text effect in Adobe After Effects. Now this is great for intros and all sorts of stuff. I'm sure you can find a use for it in one of your projects. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Alright, so as I was saying earlier, I'm going to be showing you how to do that text effect. So let's go ahead and look at it first. I'm in After Effects right now. So this is an After Effects tutorial. So what is going on guys? Shannon here and today I am going to be bringing you guys another video. But, yo. Mirror, mirror on the wall, on the wall. Who's going to really be the first of all? Now, what's different from last video is last video was a welcome video. Alright, so you can kind of see right, right around, let's see, right here. If I uh, lower the playback speed a little bit, we'll go 0.2 or yeah, 0.25. You can see that the text kind of like is kind of wavy and it kind of settles its way in almost, just like that before it's full. So we're gonna be creating this today. So let's go ahead and jump into After Effects. And since I already have a project open, I'm gonna come up to uh, let's see here. We're gonna go up to File and then we're gonna click New. And no, oops, File New. I cannot. Okay, New Project. There you go. <laughs> All right, I'm going to create a new composition. We'll set the composition. It'll be 15 seconds long, 1920 by 180. Frame rate you can choose. I'm going to do 24 FPS. Actually, you know, I'll do 30. 30 FPS is optimal, especially for video editing because you can slow it down and speed it up. All right, so we got our little window right here. I'm going to grab my text tool, and I am just going to click in the center of the screen, and I'm going to type whatever I want. Uh, I do uh, recommend using a lighter font. Uh, right now I'm using, it's called Code Light. I'll leave a link to that uh, down in the description. Other things uh, you could do, Century, so let's see, yeah, Century, Century Gothic, and then you wanna do regular, oops, should actually, <laughs> Century, oh, I won't let me type anymore, Century Gothic. And it looks like there's only the regular version of this. The thinner version does work better. Unless, do I have, oh yeah, I do have a stroke on. Maybe not. I don't know why that's not working. Um, Century Gothic's a good font if you can find the uh, thinner one. Is Cocoa Mat one? I can't remember if Cocoa Mat is one of the good fonts for this. Cocoa Mat would be like a nice, happy one. Um, it, it all, it's all up to you. Definitely choose a thinner, um, a thinner font though. So I'm just gonna go back to Code, because Code is actually one of my favorite fonts. Oops, not cold bold, not code light. And um, one thing, this is a font that only supports caps, so even though it says, you can see it typed in Remington down here, but it all comes out as all caps. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, actually, we're going to select our layer down here. We're going to come up to this little thing, uh, the pan behind tool. We're going to click control. We're going to double click it, and this will move our anchor point to the center of our object. Then we're going to switch back to our black arrow tool, right click our text object, transform, and then center in view. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make this white because it is blue for some reason. I'm going to get rid of the stroke because we don't need a stroke on this layer. You can see it's actually a lot thinner without the stroke. And since I don't want a stroke, I'm just going to click this thing. This is our first layer we're going to be adding onto this. The next thing you want to do is grab your masking tool or your pen tool and we're going to create a mask and this mask is going to be nice and wavy. You can mask it from the side, make it kind of uh, snake its way in or you could do it from the top. I'm going to do mine across just like I had in the Sanity Games intro. You want to have nice big curvy curves just like that and then you're going to connect it at the top just like that. And now you can see half of our thing's gone, but you know, it doesn't really matter at the point, this point. Uh, next I'm going to select my text layer and I'm going to press M, which will pull up our mask path tool. And I'm just going to double click the mask thing to pull this all the way down. If you'd like, you can go the long way, but this is quicker. And I'm going to uh, add a keyframe to the mask expansion. And um, then we're going to go ahead and drag the mask expansion into the negative until our model, or not our model, sorry, I'm still used to Blender, until our text object completely disappears. Then we're gonna go about two seconds into the future, and then we're gonna drag it so our text object is completely visible. So let's go ahead and just do a quick render. 
All right, so you can kind of see how that works. How it kind of slightly eases in, just like that. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that as uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but you you can kind of see it. Um, the mask will get less curvy the further away it is. So the more mask expansion, or more or less, the further away it is from zero, the more pointy the points on the mask get. I wonder if I can, oh no, I can't do that. But you can see how like it kind of gets pointier, but I'm just kind of dragging on now. And I'm going to select these two keyframes and press F9 to make them easy ease keyframes. This is optional. I prefer this. It looks a lot nicer, in my opinion. And I'm going to now duplicate this layer. And I'm going to enlarge my timeline here. And I'm going to drag it about 5 to 10 uh, frames into the future. And what we're going to do with this is actually... Uh, we go into here. I'm going to uh, make sure that we're going to put on a stroke. I'm going to do about 10 for the stroke. And you want to make sure this says stroke overfill. And then this is where you start to choose your color. If you'd like green, you can choose green. I choose a lighter green because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do green right now um, because that is my channel color. Um, I, you want to choose a, like a lighter, like um, not too dark. You don't want it to be like this, otherwise it's going to look really bad. Instead, you want it to be kind of light and peppy, unless you are going for a dark feeling, but that's not really very fitting for this. Um, then you can change the stroke width. Um, I'm going to put mine at 15. Yeah, 15 is a bit too much. We'll do 13. 13 looks good. So now you can kind of see, if we scroll through the timeline, actually, we'll just do a RAM render right here. So you can see, it kind of peels down, just like that. All right, so then we take our Remington layer, or your text layer, duplicate it once again, control C and control V. And this layer we're going to make a bit thicker. I'm gonna make this one about 20. And I'm going to offset it by about eight frames again. Seven or eight frames. Try and keep it proportional if you can. So this is seven, so that means we need to go to 14. Four, five, six, seven, yep, just like that. Just wanna make sure I did the math right there. Um, and then I'm going to change the color so it's the same color, just a bit darker, a bit more vibrant. Just like that. And so now you can see all three of our layers are kind of going together. If you'd like, you can space them out more than seven frames. I'm actually going to do that now. We'll do eight frames. Yeah, there we go. Um, we'll be adding in more effects later too, just to give a better idea of what this looks like. And you can add in as many of these layers as you'd like. I'm going to add in one more colored layer before I switch back to white. And make it this... If you want, you can color these differently too. Like if I wanted this layer to be blue for whatever reason, like channel colors were uh, red and blue or something like that, I could change the colors of that too. Offset at about 8 frames, 24 it should be. Oh, I forgot we have to change the stroke too. Change that to 25. Now it looks like it's just about the same color as our other thing, so I am going to try and darken it up a little bit more. And we'll make one more final layer. Make this one 30 pixels of stroke. And we will make it white once again. So it kind of gives that effect here. We'll, and then, well, once again, you have to offset it by about 8 frames. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And now if we go ahead and preview it. So you can see I did add a lot of layers. So it is going to look a little funky. But it does get that kind of dripping effect. Now another thing we can do here is in our effects and presets, we can add in a drop shadow effect. And we can add that to all the layers. So I'm going to add it to this one. And you can't really see it on the first one. I'm going to change the opacity to about 75 though and change the distance to about 15. And we'll just copy this effect and paste it on all of the other layers. And it looks like I'm going to have to change the softness a bit because I forgot to change the softness. We'll do 10 for the softness. Or we'll do 10 for the softness and 10 for the distance. Seems about right. 
the one last layer, to the softness, to the distance. All right, so now you can kind of see, we really get those layers in there. Um, if you'd like to space mount more or add, actually I'm going to take out this last green layer because there's just way too much going on if I were to do that. Uh, you do want it to still look good, so keep that in mind. So here we can kind of see, uh, here we'll render it. So it looks like it kind of goes a little bit fast. We can slow it down though if we'd like. So we'll add, we'll make everyone go 10 frames. Perfect. There we go, that looks a little nicer. Um, another effect that you can do with this is you can take the each layer, so you keep the main layer, your main, uh, your top layer, the final layer that comes in. You keep it where it is. I'm actually gonna scroll down my timeline a little bit. We'll go to two seconds. Um, you keep this one where it is, but then you select the layer below it, and then move it right, maybe four, then down four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. All right, just like that. And now we get this really cool layered text effect. This is uh, this is an intro I actually just finished. I haven't published it to my YouTube channel yet. Uh, you'll see it's for Messy Mountain, but you can see it creates like a 3D effect almost. And if you'd like, you can also take the mask, for example, for this one, I can tweak the mask a bit, maybe drag it a bit to the right. For this one, we can take the mask, maybe drag it, drag individual points, make this a bit sharper, make this a bit less sharp, drag this down a little bit more, drag this up a little bit more. And we can do the same for this one, tweak this one a little bit, we can move the whole thing up a little bit. Be careful when doing this though, because if you do mess up, you mess up. <laughs> and then it's gonna kinda ruin the effect. So now if we look at this, it kinda gets that nice flowy feeling. So now I have this nice cool 3D kinda text thing with these layers flowing in, four text layers. And now we need something to top it off. And you can see in the actual intro itself, it kinda looks almost wavy right at the beginning. So what we're going to do to create this is we're going to create a new adjustment layer by going to uh, layer, new, and then adjustment layer, or control, alt, y, I believe it said. And then we want to grab from the effects and presets panel, we want to do turbulent displace, add this to our adjustment layer. And then we're going to keyframe the evolution. And then about two seconds in, we'll keyframe or we'll change it to maybe 238 and we can kind of change the size depending on how much we want it to be displaced uh, Smaller sizes are better for this. I'd say anything between 25 and 50 looks good So I'll do 40 and I'll do the amount is about 20 actually we'll go 30 with this and Then we'll actually go to back to the beginning and keyframe the amount as 30 and about About like three quarters of the way through you don't want to have any more um, displacement, so we'll set that to zero. Make sure you have zero turbulence, so kinda, actually, um, you know, I just realized this. You wanna get it so that it's like when it's, when it's almost complete, like, maybe about here. So when you want the rest of the displacement to go away. I might actually, uh, move this, like, to about here, cause it does take a while for it to come down. That way it kind of works its way in. I'm going to change the size so it's a bit, maybe 30. I'll change the amount up to 40. I'll make it wait a bit longer. It's all tweaking. You can make it however you like. Oop, I do not like that. So maybe 33. Yeah, change the size down even more. 10. 10 and 35. Alright, that looks good, so let's go ahead and render it. Alright, just like that. And I find with this effect it helps if you add a wiggle onto it, so you can kind of see right now it's just kind of plain. But if I were to create a new composition, this is just a little tip, it's not necessary. 
insert composition. We'll, yeah, same length. We'll insert composition one and we'll add a wiggle position onto it. And we'll do maybe 30 pixels, one wiggle per second. Then we'll add wiggle rotation onto it as well. And then we only want it to turn one degree and we'll do uh, 0.5 wiggles per second. And let's see what it looks like. Uh, it's a little too wiggly. But you kind of, it's, it kind of makes it a bit more lively if you get that general idea. So we'll maybe change the, how far it can turn to like 1.5 and then we'll change this to 20. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. That looks a lot better. So it gives it a bit more liveliness, liveliness makes it seem a bit more like a fluid instead of just some sort of thing sitting there. And that is how you do this layered text effect. So I hope this helped you guys. If you have any trouble getting this to work or if you have any questions, just leave a comment down in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you need anything else, any more information, hopefully I'll be able to include everything down in the description. So thank you guys for watching and once again, I'll see you guys later. Adios.